Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Frida um, Nelms, and I'm here at Metro Dallas Homeless Alliance. And thank you so much for attending today's webinar on submitting your hit and pit numbers to MDHA. I um, am going to turn this over, this presentation over to um, Derek. He is with ICA. For those of you who don't know, MDHA um, has partnered with ICA, who's a consulting company, and they're here helping us in the HMIS department. So I'll turn that over to Derek now. Great. Thanks, Brita. So um, I'm just going to start off with a little brief introduction to what the point in time and housing inventory count is for those of you who might not know. Um, the point in time count is a yearly count of people experiencing homelessness in our communities. Um, it's used to influence decision making regarding homelessness at the federal, state and local level. Uh, the unsheltered count, which you you just did last week is something that is required to do every other year, but some communities do do it every year. And the shelter count happens every year. So if you hear point in time or pit being that that term being thrown around, that just means we're counting people who are on the streets. We're counting people who are staying in our shelters. It's as simple as that. You might also hear HIC or housing inventory count being used. Um, and that is a count of a community's bed capacity. And uh, furthermore, an analysis of their of their utilization. So point in time, PIT, we're counting people. HIC, housing inventory count, we are counting number of beds. Um, then we can use this to determine the the level of need that our community has for beds for or the uh, or for services, we can see whether or not the number of homeless is going up or down each year. And it's a really important um, reporting that happens uh, every single year. And so you as the agencies have an important role in this. And your role mainly is to verify the, the, the bed counts and the total people served. And if there are any changes to those counts um, to report on those for us. So that's kind of just the main general overview. I also have a, a link. I'll throw this in the in the chat here. It's just a, a really quick overview in HUD's own language um, of what all of this is. OK. Give me a second here to get organized. And that brings me to the PIP report in HMIS, um, or the point in time report in HMIS. Oh, I, Frida, I actually don't have presenting um, rights at the moment. Well, let's see if we can fix that, Derek. Oh, Lord. Do I need to? Do I need to leave? and sign in as MDHA and come back, or it says only meeting organizers and presenters can share. And I thought I made you as a meeting organizer. I thought I was very intentional about that, Derek. Um, guys, give us just a moment, please. You might be able to hover over his name and click the three dots. It's not doing that. OK, it's a yep. It's not there. It's really odd. Give me just a sec, y'all. Let's see if we can resolve this. Okay. 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 
Guys, give me just a moment. I am trying to figure this out. Derek, are, um, when you look at your team setup, are you listed as being under ICA or under MDHA? Um, I'm I'm under ICA. You want me to leave, log in as MDHA and come back? You think that would resolve the issue? I think that might. Okay. okay, that'll make you part like an option. Okay, I'll be right back. Hey, Zach, do me a favor. Will you see if you have the option to present? Um, I do now. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So, so whenever he also do. Yeah, I just changed the settings, but whenever he comes back, he I, he should have it because I just made it where everyone can present. Awesome. OK. <laughs> Derek, you should be good to go now. OK, yeah, I was going to say when I logged into the MDHA. It I didn't I'm a, I'm a guest in that in that environment, so I didn't have access to the calendar and everything, but it looks I can share now, so. Yeah, OK, sorry about that, guys. We're ready. All right. Cool, thank you for your patience with that. OK, so um, that brings me to HMIS here. Um, and so to run a point in time report, and this is to um, this is going to be used by Mercy Shelter, Transitional Housing, and Safe Haven projects. So all the projects that are serving clients that are homeless, um, we need to use this report in HMIS to to confirm that what's in HMIS is correct, because we're going to use this report to um submit our numbers to to hud so um i'm in the reports workspace you can go into hmis reports and it's called the point in time 22 report you'll select the point in time date which was last week last thursday i believe uh on the 24th um, you'll be logged in as your organization and uh, work group, HMIS programs, and your organization. And you'll notice that, here, let me do an example of Austin Street Center. You can actually choose multiple programs, but for the sake of this report, um, only run these one by one for for your programs that would be included in the pit. So your emergency shelter programs, safe haven and transitional housing programs. So for an example, um, I'm going to select ASC's emergency shelter. The unsheltered 
count criteria for this, you're going to select the service code called PIT 2022 report code do not record for clients. And then you can select the detail, so leave this blank. You can select this if you want, it's optional. Um, and then you can hit report. Is it possible for you to make that report a little bit bigger? It's very tiny. Oh yeah, no problem. Um, this better? So depending on the size of the program and number of clients, it could take a, um, a little bit for the report to run and it's completed. So what you'll see here is it looks like it pulled zero clients, but that's because each one of these pages in this report is for a different household type or um, population type. So uh, for Austin Street Center Emergency Shelter, they serve zero clients with at least one child, one adult. So that means they had zero families served on that night. However, if I turn the page here to page two, households without children, so single adults or just adults without children with them, they serve 220 clients. Um, I could click on this number and get a detailed uh, a client report and get everybody's names and everything. I'm not going to do this for the purpose of this training. However, if you're when you're reconciling this data, you can click on this and if you you would expect to see 12 people, for example, and uh, there were 14 people in there, you could click on this and see, oh, uh, John Doe is still enrolled. I need to exit them. So that's that's a useful tool in this report as well. So um, this is the households without children. The child only. Um, page here so you that they serve no. Uh, children only, households, veterans. Looks like they served zero veterans. Oh wait, they served uh, seventeen veterans that night. Um, a couple of youth, one youth, and then the special populations: mental illness, substance abuse disorder, HIV/AIDS, and domestic violence. So, what we need from you is to confirm that this is correct. So um, looking at this 220 number, um, compared to the HIC chart that you also submitted to, to Phil, you should be able to ascertain whether or not uh, this 220 number is correct. Um, if it has, if this project has 220 beds and, and it was full that night, then you could assume um, this is right. Right. If your if your shelter only has 100 beds and there are 220 clients, then um, you need to see, you know, maybe the housing inventory chart was incorrect. So maybe you increased your housing inventory uh, in the last year. Maybe uh, you need you have clients that have been enrolled in HMIS for too long and they need to be exited. Um, but the important thing is that this number is correct and that it makes sense in in conjunction with the in conjunction with the uh, housing inventory chart that you're that you're working with Phil on. Um, if your inventory on here exceeds 110 percent or goes under 60 percent, so if for example, if you reported to Phil, I have 100 beds. Um, or if I if you reported you have what is it 190 beds and you're you have and you have 220 beds in HMIS, that's going to show an over 110 percent utilization. So you need to either explain um, that you know why why that is. Maybe it was really cold that night and you found some extra beds and you need to get some extra people in there. Maybe you expanded your your inventory and vice versa. If it's under 60 percent, so if if this if you reported 220 beds to fill and this number here in HMIS were like 100 um 
you need to report, hey, there was construction, we couldn't go to full capacity, but under normal circumstances, we would have a 220 beds every night. So, um, so just confirm that these numbers are correct. The main boxes to look at is, are these top ones, just the number of households and persons. Um, again, uh, looking at each page here. Let me do another example. Just so you can see. Um, signing as family gateway. Again, I'll put the point in time date. And I'm going to do the project. Um, oh, I didn't do the uh, service code. So running this one for Family Gateway, I wanted to do a couple of different um, reports to show you kind of what the different tabs could look like um, when you're running these. So this one, a Family Gateway, as we would expect, there are uh, on the the page for households with at least one adult and one child. Uh, this is populated with 33 households and 139 people. So they serve families. Um, and you, if, if you're looking at this with the housing inventory chart, maybe your capacity, your max capacity is 150. Um, you weren't full that night. So, you know, uh, that would confirm that this is a, uh, this looks right, um, but again, if there's something off, uh, please confirm that the, the people enrolled in here are correct. Uh, these are the, so flipping the page here to page two, households without children, uh, single adults, they serve zero, as we would expect with the family shelter. Um, and it looks like you do have some clients, or some households with children only. Um, this might be worth looking into, again, if. Um, if I was in a TA session one on one with you all, I would click on this number and see who it is and do some analysis. Sometimes children only households make me a little suspicious because usually you would expect an adult to be there with the child. You might have child only dedicated beds there. I'm not entirely sure, but um, I would look into these child only beds. Maybe you just maybe somebody forgot to add a a. Uh, an adult head of household to this family, to this household. So um, that's the child only page. Veterans, it looks like you, they serve no veterans on that night. And youth households, looks like a repeat of the uh, child only households. And then these additional homeless populations. And all of this information is in Megan's guide that she made. I can uh, supply you the link for that um, after this training here. So, um, so what you'll do is you'll run these reports. You'll confirm that those numbers are correct compared with what you report to fill on the housing inventory chart. Get HMIS to match what uh, actually happened on that night of the of the twenty fourth. Then you will either uh, download the report either from this report tab or report um, page, or you can schedule the report. It'll it'll um, populate in your repository of saved reports to then uh, put in a SpiceWorks ticket. So you'll run these for all these all these report all of the uh, projects that you manage. Um, at your organization, all of the safe haven, emergency shelter, and transitional housing projects. And the 
again, the purpose for all this is to make HMIS match what was happening on that night and to also make sure that HMIS uh, numbers are making sense with what um, uh, with what we're reporting. So you can either download it from here, any of these formats, or with the report scheduler. Any questions so far on the point in time count? Or I guess we'll I guess we'll leave we'll leave the questions until the end. So that's the point in time count um, report. Um, I'm going to move on to the second part of this. This is for permanent housing um, programs only, uh, and we're going to be using the by names list to to um, to inform our, our what we're putting on the housing inventory chart um, for our submission this year. So if you are a rapid rehousing, permanent supportive housing, other permanent housing, you'll you'll go to the by names list, BNL reports part of of here. You'll click on uh, HMIS active client list. Let me get. I'll just get back into MDHAs. For the date, you will put the 24th on both of these. So we're just looking at In time date. You'll say active at any point. Again, all of this is in is in the guide that Megan created for us. Um, the active client, you want entry exit dates. And then you'll select your program again, do this one by one. Don't multi select your programs. We'll select a rapid rehousing project. Um, I'll just do this this dirter one. We'll do the households only and we'll hide the PII so that way I can uh, you can send it in Spiceworks and I can do the report um, uh, live here in the training. So I'm going I'm going to hit report. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any data in here. What's a good rapid rehousing project that would have had clients served um, on that day? New Housing Crisis Center. Housing Crisis Center. Mm -hmm. Wait. There you go. Oh yeah, you can. Which one of these? Um, do HCC scroll up? Either one of those should be good. OK. Thank you. Now I'll click report. It'll give me my clients. It's all um, redacted. There's no PII in here. And then I'll download this as Excel data. So when this downloads as an Excel data, it allows me to look at additional fields that are not included in this report. Um, my computer does is kind of finicky with Excel data, so it always tries to download them as or open them as uh, in Internet Explorer. Explorer. Um, so I have to tell it to open with Excel, so that's why I'm going to here to do that. You might not have that problem. Um, I always have to do that. Same here, I do too. Yeah. Um, it is opening the document. So I can automatically tell. Um, the, you know, there, there aren't that many clients in here. There's one client without a move-in date, so that means that, uh, but if you had more clients in here, if you had hundreds, You'd want to filter this 
on a move-in date that is blank. And this shows that you have um, 13 clients, adults with children with move-in dates on that night, on that day. Um, so for the sake of the, the uh, housing inventory chart, you would have um, assumedly 13 uh, units. And then the number of um, beds would be the number of children included with this. So maybe you'd want to run this actually with all clients, right? Right, Frida? I'm trying to unmute myself, yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to run this with all clients as well. Again, this is just to um, confirm the number of beds that you're putting. The, the permanent permanent housing projects are putting on their housing inventory chart. So, um, if you're if if this project, if you are paying for however many units this was, 13 units at the time of the the point in time then you could assume this is correct. But if you are paying for 20 families rent and you only have 13 show up with a housing move-in date, that probably means that you need to add some housing move-in dates for folks so that we can get HMIS to match what's what you reported on your housing inventory chart and then um, everything will be will be correct. So um, what, what we ultimately want with permanent housing projects is the number of of beds and units that we report to to HUD to match the same number of families that have or single individual clients that have a housing move-in date applied to them on this day. We need those numbers to match. So um, I'm going to open up the other one. So again, if if um, if this looks correct, then you might not have to to do this whole other workflow because you're going to have to look at the case IDs to confirm because the the children's the kiddos aren't going to have their housing moving date applied. Uh, I can see from this other report the client that is blank is 1846.56, so they can be excluded from this report. So um, your total number of clients on this night for this project should be 38. So 13 households, 38 uh, total clients. Um, if that doesn't look right, then you probably need to apply some housing move-in dates or you might have some family compositions uh, incorrect. But if this is right, then I would use this, these numbers to put on your housing inventory chart. Um, and then again, download it, download this, or uh, you already have it downloaded, but uh, include this in a Spiceworks ticket for all your permanent housing projects. Um, 
you want me to run through any more of ones like this, Frida? I don't think so. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's how you use the my name active list to inform your housing inventory if you're a permanent housing provider. And um, at this time, that's that's um, that's all of the information in terms of the the training. Let's let's go ahead and open it up for some question and answer. If people have any questions. Yeah, this is Dwight. Uh, the guide document that you mentioned is, is that stored on the website, or will it be emailed out? I can give it to you right now, and I I assume it will also be emailed out to you all. So it's in the um, it is in the chat right now. Okay, thank you. It's in no the chat, you all, and I'm going to share my screen just so that um, I can I can show you what that looks like. It's pretty easy to follow, but I would still like to show it to you. So if you take a look here, um, this again, this link was just provided in the chat, and this is basically just a landing page for 2022 um, point in time count and housing inventory chart. And the section that you're interested in, if you scroll down, we have, um, it says emergency shelter, uh -huh. transitional housing, and safe haven. And this is the cheat sheet. And I'm just gonna open that in a new tab for you so that you can actually see it. This is the cheat sheet that shows you how to run that point in time count report in HMIS, which is, what Derek just demonstrated for us for us um, a few minutes ago. And then for those of you who have um, permanent housing programs, um, this is, I'm gonna open this in a new tab for you. And this, here you'll find the instructions for running what we call the by name list report in HMIS so that you can filter and see which clients have housing move-in dates and which clients do not have housing move-in dates. Coming back to the to this landing page here, there are also um, da, 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 da. notice that Megan has given us instructions for your point in time um, report itself. It says submit the PDF to the HMIS team via SpiceWorks no later than 310. And for our permanent housing programs, you can submit the Excel document to the HMIS team via SpiceWorks ticket no later than 310. So this is how you are going to submit those numbers to us and so that we will have that information for, um, so that we can then reconcile, see if there are any questions, right? Um, and we can start to prepare to submit those numbers to HUD. So we want you to confirm, we want you to run the reports in HMIS. You know your clients and um, your, your um, programs better than we do. If the, if the date of the reports that you run, if those reports are not accurate, you have an opportunity to go in and to um, get that data entered or updated into HMIS, submit those reports to us so that we can confirm that the information in HMIS is correct so that we can then turn around and submit it to HUD. And uh, this is Austin Street. I have a quick question. Sure. The yeah, the the HIC chart that we were sent needs to reflect the number of beds that were filled on that night, not potential capacity, correct? Okay. Um, the, the, which, so if it's a uh, mercy shelter or if it's one of those homeless projects, right? Um, you want the housing inventory chart to have the number of, of beds that you have. So if at full capacity, your inventory is 250, but you serve 220 that night, that 220 is just the point in time. It's used for utilization analysis. So you were, you had 220 and the 250 is the max, then you were like at 80% capacity that night. That's all that that's showing. You wouldn't want to put 
just the number that you get on the pit report for an emergency shelter because we want to have that utilization um, information, how how full you were, if you were at over capacity or if you were under capacity, right? Um, for the um, permanent housing, you you would use the BNL. What you have in HMIS should be what you put on your um, housing inventory chart because that's how many people were housed in your project on that night. Does that make sense? I'm still a little confused. Okay, so on the on the housing inventory chart, that number for emergency shelter should be total capacity. Right. Correct. For our rapid rehousing programs, that should be the number of units filled that have move-in days. Right. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Because if you just put the number, because otherwise for rapid rehousing, it would be all speculative if it was done in the same mm -hmm. way that, that Mercy Shelter, you would say, well, we have a capacity to, to pay for 30 units, but we only have 10 housed right now. They only mm -hmm. want to know how many you have housed right now. Right, okay. right, right, so, right. So despite those all being on the same chart, they're actually two different things. Yeah, there is there is different okay. logic with the depending on your type okay. of program. Yeah, I was trying to apply the same logic, and when I saw those numbers, I'm like, oh, that's that's wildly wrong. Um, okay, so the emergency shelter is going to be total capacity, rapid rehousing, or units built. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Are there any other questions? Yes, I have a question for you. This is Tanya, Family Gateway. We have two locations. Um, are the locations combined together or will it be just one location at a time? Like we have a Plano and we have the downtown. So for, um, we have you set up as by projects, okay? So it's a single program in HMIS. So for example, Family Gateway has um, an emergency shelter. And yeah. I know that Amanda was here, so Amanda can back me up on this without me actually having to log into HMIS to look at it. But you have a emergency shelter and that emergency shelter capacity, um, it may include both locations or it may be two different, lo um, lo it may, be two different locations or maybe one program that serves two different locations. So what we need you to run these reports is based. Uh, we need this report based on each project in HMIS. So it's not necessarily on. Um, you may have it set up as locations, Tanya, but when you log into HMIS, we actually need a report for each program. So each rapid rehousing program you have, each permanent housing program you have, each emergency shelter program you have. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Um, the only other thing that I would add is that um, and we have some time to reconcile all this. We need to, to for, for the next week, um, uh, please run these and get HMIS to match as much as possible. We'll be getting into contact with you to see if we need any other information as we're putting this into the HUD's portal for these numbers. Um, at the end of the day, if 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 um, we have to just base whatever we put in HMIS or whatever we put into HUD's portal, um, we're going to use whatever's in HMIS. <laughs> we have to assume that HMIS is correct for this um, for this reporting. Um, so this is your opportunity to fix what's in there before we we click submit. So um, it's really important that that everything gets cleaned up as as uh, efficiently as possible. I have one last question. Um, so you actually talked about a situation that we're currently having where we have a more limited capacity right now because of anticipated construction happening. So the HIC chart, is that our total capacity when we're not having that? Or do we change that based on 
what our capacity is currently. I believe, and I could be corrected, but I believe the the guidance is to put what what um, I think it depends on when the construction would be completed. Um, I can. Derek, I would step in here. I would say if you are funded for so many beds, um, that's what you're going to do. If the construction is impeding that, but the, still the end goal is going to be what you're funded for, that's what you need to include on the HIC. Yeah, okay. that's where I, that's where I was going. And you just leave a comment saying we're under construction. We're expected to be at max capacity in May. Gotcha. OK. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, I believe we have a a office hours for next Wednesday. Rita can send you that um, invitation out. So if you have any questions next Wednesday, I will be available for you to ask any any questions. Um, but if we have no more questions, I, I think we can give you 15 minutes back. I am copying the link to the office hours, everyone. I'm going to put that in the chat for you right now. We'll be sure to send out another. Uh, another um, communication to you just as a follow up to this webinar. We'll send out the recording. We'll make sure that you have the resources that we shared with you today as well as share the um, link to office hours with you. So as you start to run your reports, if you have any questions, if you run into any issues, um, plan on attending that a webinar for us. Um, and also, if I could just add really quickly, is we just realized like today that folks who have been coming through new user training, they're not receiving the HMIS emails that I send out. So you folks on this call, if you could make sure that your team is signed up to receive um, important HMIS emails so that when we send those out, um, your team, um, those who use HMIS will have those that important information that we send out. Um, but I'll make sure that everyone here specifically on this call that you get the recording, the link to the recording, the resources, along with the calendar invite for office hours next week. And I'll also send that out in a um, broader communication. And if there are no more questions, you can go ahead and you could um, you can jump off. We'll hang around for another four minutes or so just in case you do have questions. And I am going to stop the recording as well.